Good morning. This is one of those author unknown quotations that you might have heard before. I keep it pasted on my refrigerator door, and I thought it would be particularly apropos for today. A smile costs nothing, but gives much. It enriches those who receive without making poorer those who give. It takes but a moment, but the memory of it lasts sometimes forever. None is so rich or mighty that he cannot get along without it, and none is so poor that he cannot be made rich by it. Yet a smile cannot be bought, begged, borrowed, or stolen, for it is something that is of no value to anyone until it is given away. Some people are too tired to give you a smile. Give them one of yours, as none needs a smile so much as he who has no more to give. While we don't have a page here today, would you please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. Now, as is customary at the beginning of every brand new session, uh, we will call the roll for attendance to assure the body that there is a quorum. Uh, Ainsworth of Royalton. Here. Ansel of Callas. Bancroft of Westford. Bartholomew of Heartland. Here. Baser of Bristol. Here. Bachelor of Derby. Here. Beck of St. Johnsbury. Here. Velasky of Windsor. Dior of Highgate. Here. The Senate of Winooski. Bach of Chester. Botso of Pownall. Brennan of Colchester. Briglin of Thetford. Here. Browning of Arlington. Here. Brumstead of Shelburne. Buckholtz of Hartford. Here. Burdett of West Rutland. <laughs> Burke of Brattleboro. Present. Canfield of Fairhaven. Here. Carr of Brandon. Here. Chestnut Tangerman of Middletown Springs. Present. Christensen of Wethersfield. Christie of Hartford. Here. Chena of Burlington. Here. Colburn of Burlington. Here. Condon of Colchester. Oh. Conlin of Cornwall. Here. Connor of Fairfield. Conquest of Newbury. Here. Copeland Hansis of Bradford. Here. Corcoran of Bennington. Here. Cooley of Rutland City. Present. Dakin of Colchester. Here. Dean of Westminster. Here, and I'd like to explain my vote. <laughs>
Brad of Moortown. Here. Bram of Williamstown. Here. Haas of Rochester. Here. Harrison of Chittenden. Here. Head of South Burlington. Here. Hebert of Vernon. <laughs> Present. Helm of Fairhaven. Present to be here. Higley of Lowell. Here. Hill of Wolken. Here. Hooper of Montpelier. Here. Hooper of Randolph. Present. Houghton of Essex. Here. Howard of Rutland City. Jessup of Middlesex. Here. Jickling of Randolph. Here. Joseph uh, Johnson of South Hero. Here. Joseph of North of North Hero. Here. Jeskowitz of Cambridge. Here. Keith of Manchester. Here. Kenan of St. Albans City. Kimball of Woodstock. Here. Kitzmiller of Montpelier. Here. Krowinski of Burlington. Here. LeClaire of Berry Town. Present. Lalone of South Burlington. Here. Lanfer of Virgins. Lawrence of Linden. Here. Lafave of Newark. Here. Lewis of Berlin. Here. Lippert of Heinsberg. Here. Long of Newfane. Here. Luke of Hartford. Present. McKay of Williston. Here. Marcotte of Coventry. Here. Martell of Waterford. Maslin of Thetford. Here. Mattis of Milton. Here. McCormick of Burlington. McCoy of Pulteney. Present. McCullough of Williston. Aye. McFawn of Berrytown. Here. Miller of Shaftesbury. Here. Morris of Bennington. Morrissey of Bennington. Rowicki of Putney. Here. Murphy of Fairfax. Here. Myers of Essex. Here. Nolan of Morristown. Here. Norris of Shoreham. Present. Noyes of Wolken. Here. Odie of Burlington. Here. O'Sullivan of Burlington. Here. Payala of Londonderry. Here. Tarrant of St. Albans Town. Partridge of Wyndham. Here. Pierce of Richmond. <coughs> Horrier of Berry City. Present. Potter of Clarendon. Here. Hugh of South Burlington. Here. Quimby of Concord. Here. Rachelson of Burlington. Reed of Faston. Rosenquist of Georgia. Here. Savage of Swan. Here. Shy of Middlebury. Here. Sherman of Stowe. Here. Sharp of Bristol. Present. Shaw of Pittsburgh. Here. Sheldon of Middlebury. Here. Sabelia of Dover. Smith of Derby. Here. Smith of New Haven. Here. Squirrel of Underhill. Here. Stevens of Waterbury. Here. Strong of Albany. Here. Stewart of Brattleboro. Sullivan of Dorset. Present. Sullivan of Burlington. Here. Taylor of Colchester. Here. Terenzini of Rutland Town. Here. Till of Jericho. Present. Toledo of Brattleboro. Here. Toll of Danville. Townsend of South Burlington. Trever of Rockingham. Present. Triano of Stannard. Turner of Milton. Here. Van White of Ferrisburg. Here. The Ends of Newport City. Present. Waltz of Ferry City. Webb of Shelburne. Here. Weed of Enosburg. Here. Will Hoyt of St. Johnsbury. Here. Wood of Waterbury. Present. Wright of Burlington. Here. Yakimoni of Morristown. Here. Yantachka of Charlotte. Here. Young of Glover. 
Brennan of Colchester. Brumstead of Shelburne. Here. Burden of West Rutland. Christensen of Weathersfield. Condon of Colchester. Connor of Fairfield. Fields of Bennington. Gannon of Wilmington. Gardner of Richmond. Gonzalez of Winooski. Howard of Rutland City. Here. Keenan of St. Albans City. Lanfer of Virgins. McCormick of Burlington. Here. <coughs> Morris of Bennington. Here. Parent of St. Albans Town. Pierce of Richford. Rachelson of Burlington, <clears throat> Reed of Faston, <laughs> Sevilla of Dover, Stewart of Brattleboro, <clears throat> Waltz of Berry City, Young of Glover, All right, assuring uh, me that, the, that we do in fact have a quorum. Um, we can proceed on to our first order of business, which is adoption of rules to govern the special session. The, um, the resolution was emailed to you uh, most recently by the clerk this morning, and there are a few paper copies on the table here. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. Resolved by the House of Representatives that the rules of the House of Representatives in effect on May 12, 2018 be the rules of this special session of 2018 except for the following addition thereto. Rule 40A, bills and resolutions to be placed on the calendar for notice and subsequent action shall comprise solely those bills and resolutions consisting of new matters introduced during the special session. Bills or resolutions may be introduced during the special session. Upon adjournment at CDBA of the special session, all such matters contained in these new bills and resolutions not passed by the General Assembly shall terminate automatically. Uh, speaking for the Committee on Rules, a member from Westminster. Madam Speaker, uh, the Rules Committee recommends to the body that we pass this resolution uh, on a vote of 700. Thank you. Question is, shall the House adopt HR 1? Are you ready for that question? If so, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have the ayes do have it, and you have adopted HR 1. Now, a member from Milton, would you offer us a motion uh, to have the clerk direct uh, to direct the clerk to inform the Senate that the House is assembled and is ready to proceed with the business of the special session. Madam Speaker, I move that the clerk be directed to inform the Senate that the House is assembled and is ready to proceed with the business of the special session. You've heard the motion. Are you ready for the question? If so, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes do have it, and it has moved that the clerk be directed to inform the Senate that the House has assembled and is ready to proceed with the business of the special session. Member from Milton, would you offer us a motion that we appoint a committee of six to inform the governor that the House has assembled and is ready to proceed with the business of the special session? Madam Speaker, I move that the speak Speaker appoint a committee of six to inform the governor that the House has assembled and is ready to proceed with the business of the special session. You've heard the motion, are you ready for the question? If so, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes do have it, and you have moved to appoint a committee of six to inform the governor the House is assembled and ready to proceed with the business of the special session, pursuant 
To your actions, the chair appoints the following members. The member from Burlington, Representative Kowinski. The member from Milton, Representative Turner. The member from Westminster, Representative Dean. The member from Northfield, Representative Donahue. The member from Middletown Springs, Representative Chestnut Tangerman. And the member from Fairfax, Representative Murphy. Would the committee please assemble to perform their duties? <coughs> the House will stand at ease. Please come to order. We now have a number of bills for introduction. H1, introduced by Representative Brad Mortown of U of South Burlington. Please listen to the first reading of the bill. An act relating to sexual exploitation of a person in law enforcement officer custody. To judiciary, H2 is an act introduced by Representative Ansel of Callis, please listen to the first reading of the bill. An act relating to making numerous revenue changes. To Ways and Means, H3 is introduced by Representative Brad of Moortown. Please listen to the first reading of the bill. An act relating to restorative justice principles in school discipline, prohibiting sexual exploitation of a person in the custody of a law enforcement officer and criminal threatening. To Judiciary. H4 is introduced by Representative, Callis, Representative Ansel of Callis, Sharp of Bristol, and Beck of St. Johnsbury. Please listen to the first reading of the bill. An act relating to changes in Vermont's personal income tax and education financing system. To ways and means. H5 is introduced by Representative McCullough of Burlington, Dean of Westminster, Sheldon of Middlebury, and Sullivan of Burlington. Please listen to the reading of the resolution, uh, first reading of the bill. An act relating to protecting working forests and habitat. To Natural Resources Fish Wildlife, H6 is an act relating, or sorry, H6 is introduced by Representative Will Hoyt of St. Johnsbury. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. Sorry, please listen to the first reading of the bill. An act relating to notice regarding child placement. We haven't introduced bills in a while. I'm out of practice. H7 is introduced by Representative Stevens of Waterbury and Gonzalez of Winooski. Please listen to the reading, the first reading of the bill. An act relating to creating the Department of Liquor and Lottery and the Board of Liquor and Lottery. To General Housing and Military Affairs, H8 is introduced by Representative Gannon of Wilmington, LeClaire of Marytown, and Gardner of Richmond. Please listen to the first reading of the bill. An act relating to boards and commissions. To government operations. Um, before we proceed with other announcements, the chair has an announcement, just so people have an understanding of what to expect. Um, committees um, will, those committees that have just been given some work or have some work to do in preparation for potential action by the Senate, um, are, uh, will have time today, very shortly, to work, get to work on those, uh, on those bills. Um, if there are committees that, uh, committees are authorized to meet uh, between now and the next time we meet, if, if that is the case, any member that would like to come in to uh, listen to that committee's work can sign in with Ledge Council and um, we'll, we'll be able to doing so. Um, we have, uh, when we adjourn, uh, I will ask for a motion to adjourn <clears throat> until Tuesday at 10 o'clock per discussions with, all, with your leadership. That will be a token session uh, to advance the work um, that any committees do today. And we will be back here um, on, by Tuesday. We will make the decision whether we adjourn until 10 a.m. on Wednesday or 1 p.m. next Wednesday, uh, depending on whether or not committees need additional time Wednesday morning for anything or if we need additional time on the floor, depending on our workload. Um, by that time, there may also be a need for, um, for caucuses 
So uh, we will be back here as a full body next Wednesday. Please stay in touch with uh, caucus leadership and your committee chairs about any work that is happening in the intervening days. Um, and we will make sure that you have that information. Are there any announcements? Member from St. Johnsbury. Good, good um, morning, Madam Speaker. Actually, I have a question for the, the, the speaker. Um, H6, um, I introduced, I, I, I did not hear you say where, what committee went to, so I would know who to go see. And so if you may say where, where that was sent to, I'd appreciate it. To Judiciary. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? <laughs> Member from Rochester. Uh, Madam Speaker, I move that uh, for this special session, the gentlemen be allowed to take off their jackets. You've heard the motion, perhaps one of the most popular motions that will be made this session. Are you ready for the question? If so, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Member from Milton, will you offer us a motion Madam to adjourn? Speaker. 
Madam Mr. Speaker. Oh, my apologies, Member for Westminster. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, House Natural Resources, Fish and Wildlife will meet as soon as the caucuses adjourn. Thank you. Okay, and I would encourage everybody, if you don't already know what your committee's plan is, to check in with your chair um, before you head off to caucuses. Um, Member for Milton, will you offer us a motion to adjourn until Tuesday, May 29th at 10 a.m.? Madam Speaker, I move that this body adjourn until Tuesday, May 29, 2018, at 10 a.m. You've heard the motion. Are you ready for the question? If so, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. And this body stands in adjournment until Tuesday at 10. We now will listen to the reading of the proclamation issued by the Honorable Philip E. Scott, Governor of the State of Vermont, under the date of May 23, 2018. I call for a special session of the Vermont General Assembly. I, Philip E. Scott, Governor of the State of Vermont, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution, find it necessary to call together the Vermont General Assembly and I do hereby summon the members of the Senate and House of Representatives to meet in the respective chambers of the State House together with the offices, officers of the two houses on Wednesday the 23rd of May 2018 at 10 o'clock in the forenoon for the purpose of providing Vermonters property tax relief through level statewide property tax rates, stabilizing the state's system of education finance, and making appropriations for state government for fiscal year 2019. Witness my name here to subscribe to the great seal of the state of Vermont here to affix the Montpelier of this 18th day of May, AD 2018, Philip B. Scott, Governor. Now you've heard the Governor's proclamation. Are there any announcements? Seeing none, I'd just like to remind folks that there will be no uh, phones or electronic devices in the chamber as per our normal rules. Uh, we have a Senate We have uh, a few Senate resolutions to take up at this time. Senate resolution one, a resolution relating to adoption of rules to govern the special special session of 2018 is offered by the Committee on Rules. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. Senate resolution one. Resolved by the Senate that during the special session of 2018, commencing on May 23rd, by calling the governor issued on May 18th, the Senate does hereby adopt as its rules for this special session the rules as previously adopted for the 2017 regular session, except for rules 39, 41, and 100, with the following additions thereto. Rule 33A. Bills and res joint resolutions to be placed on the calendar for notice and subsequent action shall comprise solely those bills and resolutions consisting of matters introduced during the special session. Upon adjournment sine idea of the special session, all such matters contained in these new bills and resolutions not enacted into law shall terminate automatically and be of no further force and effect. Rule 39A. No bill or resolution may be introduced during this special session unless it is a bill or resolution introduced by the Committee on Rules or a committee bill or resolution introduced with the consent of the Committee on Rules. All House bills shall be referred to the Committee on Rules which may report any bills referred to it or reference to another committee of jurisdiction pursuant to Senate Rule 24. Rule 100A. Joint, <coughs> joint rules adopted during the 2017 regular session by the legislature shall be in full force and effect during this special session. Now you've heard, now you've heard the reading of the resolution. The question is, shall the Senate adopt the resolution? <coughs> Are you ready for the question? If so, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, signify by saying nay. <laughs> The ayes have it, and you have adopted the resolution. We now have a set of resolutions to take up at this time, SR2, 
Senate resolution relating to appointment of a committee to inform the governor of the organization of the Senate. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. Senate Resolution 2, resolved by the Senate, that a committee of two senators be appointed to await upon His Excellency the Governor and inform him that the Senate has organized and is ready at its part to proceed with the business of the special session. Now you've heard the reading of the resolution. The question is, shall the Senate adopt the resolution? Are you ready for the question? If so, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, signify by saying nay. The ayes have it, and you have adopted the resolution. We now have SR3 to take up at this time. It was a resolution relating to informing the House of the organization of the Senate. It was introduced by the Committee on Rules. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. Senate Resolution 3, resolved by the Senate that the Secretary be directed to inform the House of Representatives that a quorum of the Senate has assembled and is ready on its part to proceed with the business of the special session. I have heard the reading of the resolution. The question is, shall the Senate adopt the resolution? Are you ready for the question? If so, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, signify by saying nay. The ayes have it, and you have adopted the resolution. We now uh, pursue it to the provisions of SR2. I hereby appoint as the committee to inform the governor that the Senate is ready for, to proceed with the business of the session, the following two senators, Senator Ingram and Senator Clarkson. The committee may proceed to perform your duties, and the Senate shall stand at ease until the fall of the gavel to await your report. Now you've heard the reading of the resolution. The question is, shall the Senate adopt the resolution on its part? Are you ready for the question? If so, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, signify by saying nay. The ayes have it, and you have adopted the resolution. We now have some bills for introduction. We have Senate Bill 1, an act relating to health, health insurance, chiropractic care, physical therapy, and the Department of Vermont Health Access. Please listen to the first reading of the bill. S1, an act on the co-payment limits for chiropractic care and physical therapy. I also failed to mention that it was introduced by the Committee on Rules, by the way. Now the bill has been read for the first time and pursuant to Rule 48 is placed on the calendar for notice on the next succeeding day. We now have Senate Bill 2 for introduction. It was introduced by the Committee on Rules. It is an act relating to commerce and trade and consumer protection. Please listen to the first reading of the bill. S2, an act written regulated finance leases for credit card terminals. Now the bill has been read for the first time and pursuant to Rule 48 is placed on the calendar for notice the next succeeding day. We now offer up for uh, introduction S3, introduced by the Committee on Rules, an act relating to education and protecting students from sexual exploitation. Please listen to the first reading of the bill. S3, an act related to sexual exploitation of students. Now the bill has been read the first time and pursuant to Rule 48 is placed on the calendar for notice the next succeeding day. Senator from Chittenden. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, first, just a quick word. Those three bills, uh, I had emailed the full chamber indicating that those were bills that had reached agreement and just waited and fell off the limits uh, because of rule suspension issues on the night we adjourned. And so the three bills have been introduced um, in their form that they were in that night by the Rules Committee. And, um, and spoke with uh, leadership on uh, both, both sets of leadership in the Senate. Um, I think we thought it would be more expeditious to take those up today. Um, and so I would move that we suspend the rules for the purpose of pending entry in the calendar, taking up S1, 2, and 3 for action today. Senator from Chittenden has moved that the Senate suspend its rules in order to take up for immediate consideration <coughs> pending entry on the notice calendar, bills S1. S2 and S3, are you ready for the question? If so, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, signify by saying nay. The ayes have it. And you've suspended your rules in order to take up S1, S2, and S3. We now have uh, for action S1. Uh, it was introduced uh, today. I don't remember what today is. Uh, please listen to the second reading of the bill. S1, an act relating to co payment limits for chiropractic care and physical therapy. 
Now you've heard the second reading of the resolution of the bill. Senator uh, from Chittenden. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, S1 is uh, virtually identical to S224, which uh, went to a conference committee and that was approved on the last day by the Senate chamber. The only change that's been made, just by a very brief background, this is to bring um, co-payments for chiropractic care uh, that are under law for the last 10 years or more to be mandated to be reasonable to make that happen finally. And the one change from what we voted on already in the conference committee report is on page um, three on line 15. Uh, the maximum co-payment amount, this was a technical drafting error, should be 50% of the total reimbursement amount. It used to say total charged amount. Um, so with that change, uh, I would hope the Senate would concur with this one. Question is, shall the bill be read a third time? Are you ready for the question? If so, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 As opposed, signify by saying nay. The ayes have it. You've ordered third reading of S1. We now have up for action S2, an act relating to uh, regulating, or please listen to the second reading of the bill. S2, that related to regulating finance leases with credit card terminals. Now to the report, Senator from Rutland, Senator Susi. Thank you, Mr. President. This is uh, S206, which was agreed upon in the uh, conference committee to have no changes at all, and it uh, protects uh, consumers from <laughs> onerous uh, leases on credit card processing terms. Question is, shall the bill read a third time? I'll wait to ask the question until it's been handed out to every senator. signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed signify by saying nay. The ayes have it. We've ordered third reading of S2. We now have a fraction S3. Please listen to the second reading of the bill. S3, an act in the sexual exploitation of students. Now for the report of the bill, Senator from Bennington, Senator Sears. Mr. President, this is exactly the same <coughs> version as was voted on some Saturday night ago, can't remember which one, um, and uh, it deals with the sexual exploitation of students. Um, it had a rocky history and a bill of this importance. Um, I'm surprised it last, you know, it took this long to get it through. Um, we passed it last year as part of S87 which was uh, <coughs> of students. A little portion of 87 got passed by the House Judiciary Committee on another bill, the bill went to the Education Committee in the House, where it sat on the wall by mistake. Um, this year, we reintroduced it as age 27. Um, and uh, Everything was going well. We had a conference committee. Everybody agreed on it. And then at the final moments on Saturday, uh, there was not a rule suspension, so it didn't get taken up. But I assure you, this is basically what you voted on at least five times here uh, this session, or biennium, I should say. So um, this actually is an important bill that will help protect our students from sexual exploitation. Thank you, Mr. President. The question is, shall we read a third time? Are you ready for the question? If so, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, signify by saying nay. The ayes have it. And you have ordered third reading of S3. Senator from Chittenden. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules be suspended for the purpose of taking up S1, 2, and 3 uh, to be placed in all remaining stage passage. 
Senator Virginia has moved that the Senate suspend its rules in order to uh, place S1, S2, and S3 through all remaining stages of passage. Are you ready for the question? If so, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, signify by saying nay. The ayes have it. And you have suspended rules in order to place S1, S2, and S3 through all remaining stages of passage. Are there any amendments? I'm uh, sorry, we now have consideration S1. Are there any amendments before third reading? Seeing none, this is the third reading of the bill. S1, inappropriate amendments for chiropractic care and physical therapy. You've heard the third reading of the bill. The question now is shall the bill pass? Are you ready for the question? If so, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, signify by saying nay. The ayes have it, and you have passed S1. And now, this is for consideration S2. Are there any amendments before third reading? Seeing none, please listen to the third reading of the bill. S2, I bring the regulating finance leases for credit card terminals. Now, you've heard the third reading of the bill. The question is, shall the bill pass? Are you ready for the question? If so, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. As opposed, signify by saying nay. The ayes have it, and you have passed S2. We now have a fraction S3. Are there any amendments before, or excuse me, before third reading? Seeing none, please listen to the third reading of the bill. S3, act the sexual exploitation of students. Now you've heard the third reading of the bill. The question is, shall the bill pass? Are you ready for the question? If so, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. As opposed, signify by saying nay. The ayes have it, and you have passed S3. <laughs> Senator for Chipman. Thank you. I move the rules be suspended for mess purpose of messaging our actions taken on S1, 2, and 3 to the House. Forthwith. Senator for Chipman has moved that the Senate suspend its rules in order to message your action just taken on bills S1, S2, and S3 to the House. Forthwith. Are you ready for the question? If so, all those in favor please signify by saying aye. Aye. As opposed, signify by saying nay. The ayes have it, and you've suspended your rules in order to message your actions taken on S1, S2, and S3 to the House. For when? <coughs> Senator Virginia. Uh, I think uh, I, at this time, would move pending announcements that the Senate stand in adjournment until Tuesday at 10 a.m. The Senator from Chittenden has moved that pending announcement that the Senate stand in adjournment until 10 a.m. on Tuesday. Are there any announcements? Senator from Washington. Thank you, Mr. President. Senate finance will meet at 1245. We have a presentation from the Joint Fiscal Office. Senator from Caledonia. Um, Senate Appropriations and Senate Education will meet jointly at uh, two at, at one thirty for a presentation um, from the Joint Fiscal Office, um, and then we will continue to meet um, after that presentation to hear from the administration. Senator from Chittenden. Uh, the Senator from Caledonia beat me to the punch on the initial meeting, 1.30 for Senate Education and Approves. We will not be meeting uh, at the Senate Education Committee following that. Are there any Senator from Chittenden? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you uh, to the Senate for making uh, speedy work of bills we'd already passed today. I think it does help uh, focus us on the work ahead. Um, the agreement uh, with the speaker was that the three bills that were what we would call Senate bills, which are the ones we just acted on, we would take up here, and that the three bills that were House originating would be taken up in uh, the other chamber. You may notice that in the bills that were introduced in the other chamber today that say special session, which were in front of us, only one of the three that I emailed people about, which is the liquor lottery, appears. Uh, so I'll follow up with the speaker just on timing, but the Boards and Commissions bill was the other one, and then one was related to um, uh, auto transport companies. Uh, so there were those three um, bills that we anticipate receiving from the other chamber. Um, the other is uh, Peter Sterling will contact people to find out when people would like to start on Wednesday. Um, so we'll make sure people know when we're going to uh, do that. Two quick words, uh, uh, Senator Brock's father-in-law passed away, which is why he's not here today. He's out of state, um, so we're obviously all thinking of him. We've been staying in touch so he knows what's going on. And Senator Benning today is reuniting with his daughter, which is, of course, very good news, uh, which is why he's not here today. Senator Colmore, I don't have a good answer for that one. <laughs> Are there any further announcements? Senator from Quinn. 
We will be meeting at the Democratic Caucus at noon, I believe in room 10. Are there any further announcements? Seeing none, the Senator from Chittenden has moved that the Senate stand in adjournment until Tuesday, May 29th at 10 a.m. Are you ready for the question? If so, in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, signify by saying nay. The ayes have it, and you'll stand in adjournment until Tuesday, May 29th at 10 a.m.